in Math 30 2. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to give you a little video response of the probability assignment number one. Um, this is probably going to be a weekly thing after the first day after you hand in the weekly assignment. I've given you a week's time to do it. I'm going to re release this video response so you can go over uh, your assignment with mine and see where you went wrong. If you have any questions, come ask me. Um, I'll be marking these as well, uh, so you'll probably have a pretty good estimate of what you what you got in your assignment than what you see in power school. If you think there's anything that's a little bit off, you can come ask me uh, why I mark something in a certain way. And I can give you an explanation. Okay, uh, so probability, assignment number one. So probability, this assignment is probably one of the uh, nicer assignments in probability, like you'll see in assignment number two, it's a little bit trickier because you talk about conditional probability or two events happening at the same time or one after another. So uh, we have two kids here. It's going J and C here. They invented a game. Okay. Um, what you're really just looking for in this game is you just want to know, is it fair? Is there an equal chance that uh, the kids have to win? So to figure out if they have an equal chance to see if they're going to win, first of all, you got to think of the sample space, and you got to think of how many, uh, how many options, how many favorable outcomes for each kid in that sample space. Okay, so let's look at the sample space here. They each roll a die. Okay, so let's imagine that this die is going to be a six-sided dice. So I'm going to draw my sample space out: one, two, three, four, five, and six. And one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, we're doing products here, the product of the two numbers. So I want to know what happens in the products here. So I'm going to write out my sample space. I'm going to write all the products of all of these numbers. I don't think I drew my sample space very large. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do, just to simplify this a little bit, I'm not going to actually write all the numbers out. I'm just going to highlight who's who here. So player one, I'm going to highlight green if I can. Let's give it a little bit smaller. Yeah, okay, that should work out. Um, player one is going to be if the product of the two numbers is even. Okay, so let's go through and just find out of the 36 here, because it's six by six. So if I go six times six, I get 36. So my sample space is 36 large. How many of those are even numbers? Okay, so one times one is one. That's an odd number. One times two is two. That's an even number. One times four and one times six. So those are even numbers. These are also even numbers. Now, one times three, one times three, one times five, one times five. Those are going to be odd numbers. Uh, two times two is even. Okay. Uh, anything times 2 is going to be even, so I'm just going to highlight this whole row right here because I get 6, I get 8, I get 10, and I get 12. And the same thing with this row here, I'm going to get a bunch of even numbers. Anything times 4 is even, I'm going to highlight that. Anything times 4, because 4 is made up of 2, should be even. And anything with 6 is also even. Okay, anything with 6 is also even. Okay, so it's looking at pretty favorable for this kid and even. Uh, let's just look at uh, our odd numbers. I'm going to use a, kind of this weird magenta color here. So odd, one times one, it makes sense. One times three, one times five, one times three, one times five. Three times three is nine, okay. Five times three is 15, that's an odd number. Five times three is 15, that's an odd number. And five times five is 25. Okay, so I'm just looking at, going to look at these numbers here and decide, are the, is this a fair game? Now, uh, for this one here, for the odd one, there's only 9 of the 36, while this one on the top here gets, how much more does he get? Quite a bit here, he gets like 27 spaces there. I believe that's 27, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 12, 18, 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, so 27. So is this game fair? No, it's not fair. Okay. Player one, um, has the advantage.
Okay, so that's kind of the, the kind of work I expect to see too. Like, um, how do we get this? How do we get this 27, this nine here in the sample space? So I had to draw that whole big diagram there and just kind of fill out which ones are even, which ones are odd. And if you want to, you can fill out more information in this table. You can actually write out all the different products. Remember, products is multiplication. There you go. So I got to multiply those things together. Okay. Uh, so the next, the few, next few questions here that are as uh, big as this one. Uh, here I want to know what the odds in favor of Mason, or no, I don't want to know the odds. These are the odds in favor, nine to four. State the probability of her passing her test. So this is in favor of her passing her test already. So remember when you do a probability, let's call this event A. I just want to know how many favorable outcomes out of how many in the total sample space. Like I could have done the probabilities for those previous ones if I wanted to. Well, there are nine favorable outcomes. But I remember that when you did odds, these two numbers will add to the total sample space. Okay, so if I add them together, I get my total sample space. So my total sample space is actually going to be 13. So the odds of her passing are just a 9 out of 13. Okay, you could reduce that down. I don't think you can because 13 is a prime. Okay, uh, weather condition says that there's a 30% chance or 70 sorry percent chance of rain tomorrow. Uh, we could just do a little bit of logic right now and say that, oh, there's a 30% chance probability of not rain. Okay. Might be useful. It says determine the odds against rain. Okay, so this is the 30% against raining, not raining. So I can say that that's also against. Now, remember when we do odds, we want to think about the whole sample space is. The whole sample space is 100%. So these two numbers do add up to 100%. I'm just going to write them out. Whatever is against, I'm going to write my first number first. That's my against number. So it's against raining because I'm doing odds against here. So you do your against first. Uh, then the odds in favor apparently favors rain. So I'm going to put 70 here. Okay. So the number of it not happening versus the number of it actually happening. And then you're going to reduce this down. You can divide both those numbers by 10 and get three to seven odds against raining. Okay? So that's what it means by odds. You're going to put your two uh, numbers side by side like that. Um, nine boys, 12 girls sign up for a trip. Only seven will be, let me just see, will be selected to go on the trip determine to the nearest hundredth of a percent. Okay. Hundredth is two decimal places of a percent. The probability that only boys would be on this trip. Okay. So we have nine boys and 12 girls. Only seven will be chosen. And I want a probability that all of the seven are boys, only boys. So the probability of only boys. Okay. So you're going to think, okay, how many ways can I rearrange? How many ways can I have a, yeah, a combination of these seven boys if I have nine to choose from? So that's how many ways I can have my seven boys in my groups, All right? I'm not worried about order here. So order doesn't matter. So that's why I'm using C here. They're just going to go on the trip. If they're on the trip, they're on the trip. Uh, so this is the number of favorable outcomes. Remember how we do this? You go the number of favorable outcomes and divide it by the number in the sample space. Now the sample space is going to be, now I'm going to choose seven, but I'm going to choose from all 21 people. Here's nine plus 12 here, so I get 21 total. So there's a lot of kids, a lot of different groups I can create. So let me just punch this in my calculator here. 21, math, go over to combinations here, seven. So of the 21 kids, if I chose seven of them, there's 116,280 ways I can create these trips. Then I only have nine boys. I want to choose seven of them. There's only 36 ways to do that. 
So you can think of all those 116 ways, only 36 of them have all boys in them. So not very likely. Okay, and then I'm going to divide the two. Math, enter, enter if I can. Nope, I can't. So I'm going to take my two numbers. I, if I look at my two numbers there, I could see that they're both even. They both end off with an even number, so I can definitely divide them both by two. Okay. I can also divide it by two again. So that means I can divide them both by four. Okay. So what I get if I divide them both by four, so I get 29070 zero, zero on the bottom. And then I take 36 divided by four, and I get nine. And I think I'm going to reduce this down even more. So because my calculator didn't want to do a fraction, I'm just going to do this kind of step by step. So I said, okay, I'm going to divide those both by four. I can divide 9 by 3, but can I divide 29070 by 3? Oh, I can. Can I divide by 9? Actually, maybe I should have done that before I started this question. Oh, I can. Okay, so I can divide it by 9, so I can divide both by 9. I probably could have went at the very beginning over here and just said, let's divide both the top and bottom by 36 and see what happens. So it's a 1 and 3, 2, 3, 0. Probability that this happened, but I want a percentage. Okay, so the nearest hundredth of a percent. Mm, I don't think it's going to be a very good percent. So remember, you could divide these two numbers, times it by a hundred, and I'm going to get in percentage zero. Oh, things going crazy over here. Zero point zero three oh, percent. There you go. Uh, ba, 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 ba. you have bar or you have a big of marbles with the odds. So again, I'm looking for odds here of selecting a red marble. I could look at this and say, I have seven red marbles. So that's my favorable outcome. And then on the other side, I want all my non-favorable outcomes. So I have four plus eight. I have 12 green and blue marbles. So I have seven to 12 probability or odds here of selecting a red marble. So this side's red, this side over here is green, plus blue. Okay, the probability of not selecting a blue marble, okay. So probability of blue not, I'll put a little compliment sign there. So the, the number that are not blue divided by the total number, so the total number is eight, plus four, plus seven, so 19 in total, okay? And the number that are not blue, four plus seven, so it's just the green and the seven, or 11. So my odds are 11 and 19, yeah? No, so my odds, my probability is 11 to 19, that's not that. Uh, the odds up here are selecting the red, but, so you can see the difference between the two. Uh, from a committee of 10 people, three of these are chosen randomly to be president, a vice president, and secretary. Determine to the nearest probability that Pavel, Rashida, and Jerry will be chosen to be in those positions. Um, doesn't specify it has to be in that order, so this is a little bit trickier of a question. Um, so... You have to think about, okay, so we want to find the probability that these three people are in one of those three positions, president, vice president, and secretary. Okay. So first of all, let's just figure out how many ways I can do that. There's three positions of 10 people. So order matters here. So I'm going to go 10 P3. Let me just quickly type in my calculator here. Boop, 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 boop. So 720 different ways I can do that. Cool. Now, you'd think that it would be one way to put these three people in those three spots. That would be if that was the order. If Pavel had to be president, if Rashida had to be vice president, and Jerry had to be secretary, but they could be rearranged in different ways here. So I have these three people. How many ways can I put them in those three different spots? Right. So 3P3, which is going to be three factorial six ways okay and then we're just going to reduce this down we're going to divide the top and bottom both by six 
I can divide by six, maybe I could divide by three, or I could divide by two, and just try to reduce it down as much as possible. But dividing by six worked out pretty fine, or pretty good here. So there's a one in 120 chance that they'll be chosen. Cool. Um, here, Ashley has tiles. She selects three of these tiles at random. Determine the probability of the nearest hundred that the tile she selected will consist of two consonants and one vowel. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. It seems like because she has some letters here that might repeat, you see a couple of N's and a couple of S's, um, but she's not too worried about this. She just wants to have the consonants in her hand. So not too worried the fact that there's two S's or two N's there. I just want to know the probability of the nearest hundredth, the tile selected of two consonants and one vowel. Okay, so probability two consonants and one vowel. Okay. Um, so she selects three tiles at random. So how many tiles are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's eight tiles. She's going to select three at random. They're going to be in her hand. doesn't matter the order in her hand. So I'm just going to say eight, choose three. Okay. So eight, choose three. So I get 56 ways to do that. Okay. Uh, but what's the probability of the nearest hundredth? that she will do the nearest hundred so there's probably one decimal here that she'll select two constants and one vowel so how many constants are there one two three four five so there's five constants i want to choose two and there's one two three which makes sense because three plus five is eight and i want to choose one okay so i just put these in the calculator here So it's 10, the first one, and then three, choose one. It's probably going to be three. Yeah. So there's a 30 over 56 chance this will happen. 30 over 56 chance. That is a, to the nearest hundredth, 0.54 probability. So about 24% percentage would be a 54% chance that this will happen. All right, Megan needs to create a five-digit password. Okay, uh, digits cannot be repeated in the password and cannot start with a zero. Okay, probability of the nearest hundredth password starts with a seven and ends with a two. Okay, so we're going through the same process that we did before. Let's just call this event A. Uh, first of all, how many passwords are there? Digits can't be repeated and it can't start with a zero. So I'm going to use the fundamental counting principle to do this one. So it's a five digit password. Okay. Digits can't be a zero. So that means there has to be a nine choices for this first one. It can't be a zero. Okay. And it cannot be repeated. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Can't be repeated. So the next one will also be a nine because this one could be a zero as well. So here you chose maybe like a two or something, but then you can put the zero back in this spot. So you got nine and then eight and then seven, and then six. I'm going to multiply all these together. I'm going to get how many passwords you can possibly create. So nine times nine times eight times seven times six. Oops. Okay, so we get 27,000. 216 different passwords there. All right. Uh, what are the probability to the nearest hundredth? they will start with a seven. Okay, so if I want to start with a seven, there's only one choice for that. This has to be a seven, so it's a one there. Uh, if I want to end with a two, there's only one choice there. And then we want to figure out how many digits we have left for these other choices here. So if I used a seven and a two, that means I only have eight choices for this digit here, then seven, then six for those two. Okay, so eight times seven times six. So it's 336 passwords that look like that. And then I'm gonna divide these two. Oh, we should put 16 there. That's a much better number. Oh, I want to the nearest hundredth. Well, it's a one over 81 if I reduce the fraction down. But it ends up being 
can use hundred. Zero point zero one. That's a probability, not a percentage. If I want to change it to percentage, I could. That's about a one point two three ish percent chance. But that's what they asked for this one. Okay, now last one here, they give us two odds. Game one having an odds of winning of three to five, and odd, game number two has odds against of winning of 10 to seven. Which games would you prefer? So let's just look at the probability of winning for both these games. Okay, so the first one, because it says in favor of winning, so I'm going to put three on the top, and the bottom I'm going to put eight, because I'm going to add these two together and get the total sample space. Okay, that's for game one. Okay. For game two, probability of winning is going to be, because this is against the seven, is the win number this time. And then because I'm going to add those two together to get the total number. I'm going to add those, get 17. Okay. Now it's hard to see sometimes in fraction form, which is the better fraction. So I'm going to just change it to a decimal. So it looks like game two has a better chance. Let me write it all out. Probability of winning. There you go. Uh, hopefully that kind of cleared things up about this this uh, assignment. I could see that sometimes you could question four, question six, seven there. They're a little bit trickier questions because they involve permutations and combinations from the previous chapter. And hopefully that kind of cleared things up. Um, I'll see you in the next video.